Patch 736 has finally been released after a very long period of waiting, and it comes with a ton of new changes to every single hero. Everyone now has passives and facets, which are basically optional passives or just playstyle changes in general. But uh, this video is not going to be going over all of these passives. That's going to be my next big one that'll probably come out in a week or two. Because I'm trying to get enough footage for everyone to showcase their passives, not just for you guys, but mostly for me, because I'd like to have a catalog of what everything does. But this video is going to be over one character in particular, and that's going to be Phoenix. Now, I have an extremely high amount of games on Phoenix, and have a lot to say about whatever changes come up. So honestly, what I'm thinking on doing every time that there is a patch, I want to make a video on the Phoenix changes, just because that's something that I really want to talk about, and some others might want to know opinions on. So let's get into it. So, new Phoenix changes I'm going to be going over. New passive. Uh, debuff supply a 2% mischance that stacks, lasts 5 seconds. New facets that also go over. Icarus dive changes to where the damage has been increased and the cooldown has been decreased at the later levels but increased early. Sunray no longer blinds and the blind has been moved to his passive. And talents have been changed where his level 15 500 health talent has been replaced with a 20 health regen talent. Supernova stun duration has been increased by 0.1 seconds and supernova hit counts from 3 to 2 for the level 25 talent. These are the changes I'm going to be going over. First off, abilities. Icarus Dive with a decreased cooldown, going down to 25 seconds now, as well as dealing damage equal to Fire Spirits. So what that could mean, with the level 10 and 15 talent where you can just make both Icarus Dive and Fire Spirits deal 100 DPS. So, that obviously means that you can deal a lot of burst damage right off the bat. Also, that did more. I must have got an extra attack in or something. Or, no, wait, it's the Dying Light passive that I have active that I'll show in a minute. Although that kind of shows that when Phoenix starts a fight, he can do a thousand damage passively, because I don't think I did any attacks there. I'll have to get into that in a bit. Secondly, Icarus Dive with a, a decreased cooldown at max level, so it's down to 25. That is a change I think Phoenix really needed for the longest time. Icarus Dive is a really good mobility skill, but it, it suffers from a very long cooldown. And I've always felt like that it should probably be 20 seconds at the very most, but having it an extra 5 seconds earlier honestly is good enough. There have been far too many times where I could have escaped if only I had waited 5 more seconds, or even like 2 more seconds, or even something like that. And, well, just, basically just having it on a lower cooldown is significantly better, makes the ability better to use. Talent-wise, the 500 health talent has been replaced with 20 health regen. Which, activating it, you get 35 health regen at base. This is really good, because Phoenix always uses his health to, uh, to do any of his abilities, which leaves him on low health most of the time. But with the talent, you just kind of gain that back a lot quicker. This synergizes a whole lot better with Phoenix's kit, as opposed to the plus 500 talent, because uh, you actually regain your health instead of losing it more, so that, that's nice. And correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's the highest regen health talent in the entire game. So, uh, Phoenix gets at level 15, which is a little crazy. Other talent, the Supernova Stun Duration up by 0.1 seconds. That doesn't sound like a lot, but 0.1 seconds could make a difference. I've argued with myself on getting one or the other, but uh, with the new patch that just came out, and some other games, uh, everyone getting BKB in some shape or form, getting debuff immunity. Uh, having the extra stun duration could probably be better. Meepo, shut up. There are no creeps or towers anymore. He can't talk. Heh. Supernova hit count at level 25 has been decreased by 1. This... I'm kind of confused by this because it already wasn't a lot to begin with. I mean, 3 is good? But then it got reduced to two, so like... Uh, <laughs> I don't normally go this talent anyway. I have a note here that says it's completely useless. And frankly, with the new Blinding Sun passive, I've had a few times where I should have died, but I didn't. And last thing before I get into the new passive, I found a weird problem with Icarus Dive, or I don't know if it's a problem or a feature, but... That dive was way faster than it used to. So, undocumented change, uh, Icarus Dive extra range 
is significantly faster now. Like, it used to be slower. I don't think I have any footage of what it used to be, but it used to take four seconds to reach the apex, I believe. Actually, yeah, it was two seconds to get to the apex, which made the whole dive last four seconds, but now it's, like, twice the speed. So that's pretty good. That's, that's an undocumented change. Something else to note, uh, Blinding Sun is an ability that you can skill. Important thing to note. Note here? Okay. I'm gonna also unbind my supernova. I have nothing bound for supernova. You can even see, I got nothing to even bound it with. I'm gonna press the Blinding Sun ability. Oh, what's that? I activated supernova with the Blinding Sun passive? Well, that's weird. So I advise you guys to unbind that if for whatever reason it is bound. Just, uh, just kind of be careful because there have been a couple games where that's happened and I'm like, why the heck is this supernova and I never pressed a button? Well, uh, now you might know if that ha has happened to you somehow. All right, so what's this about passives I'm not talking about? Well, we got Blinding Sun, Phoenix's ability debuffs, apply a stacking 2% mischance that lasts five seconds. So what that actually is, we're just gonna look at our little target dummy. Gonna hit him with that. So one Sunray applies seven stacks. I know I just used Icarus Dive, but the effect says Sunray, so that's probably why I said it. They haven't updated the actual name of the debuff yet, which is odd. A Fire Spirit also applies seven stacks. Sunray. We're gonna look here. Applies 11 stacks. And Supernova. In total. After the whole duration. Applies 12 stacks. So Icarus Dive and Fire Spirits is 7. Add that together 14. With Sunray that's 26%. And Supernova that ends up being about 40% mischance that you apply to everyone you hit. As long as you hit your abilities. Now, I believe how this works is that it applies a 1% mischance for every half second, which is why it goes up in increments of 1. This might also be why the two first abilities end up being a 7% mischance, because they do their first tick of damage on the uh, first half of the second, but not the later half, so we're actually missing out on a 1%. Uh, I guess that's a bug that might need to get fixed. So, main benefits with this... You apply that crazy mischance to everything a whole lot easier. And everything basically gets a four... 30 to 7? What? Okay, I guess no one gets 40, they actually get 39. Okay. But uh, that just makes applying the mischance a whole lot better. And you also don't need Sunray the whole time in order to apply the mischance. So the longer a fight goes, you can just continuously blind people. So before, with Sunray, you had to very specifically hit people and then it applies the mischance. Now it is technically less, but all of your abilities apply it, including Supernova. Stop. Stop. Thank you. Like I said earlier, that's a good change, and it has saved me a couple times in a few of my games lately. On to the new facets, Dying Light and Hotspot. Dying Light makes Phoenix deal 6% of his missing health as magic damage to everyone in a 450 radius every second. And that's pretty much exactly what it does. For every bit of health that you lose, you start doing damage per second nearby. For every 100 health lost, you do an extra 6 damage per second around you. That doesn't sound like much until you get to uh, kind of the extremes. Hey, you all, do some damage to me. So... Uh, oh <laughs> Okay, highest end of the extreme, if you have, like, a ton of health like this, you just do 200 damage per second around you. Which actually is a little crazy, just to kind of show it off. I'm just gonna burn these primals. Of course I do percent max health damage, but... Uh, it, you, saw, you saw the melting. I don't even have extra damage. Shut up, Kunku. I don't even have extra damage on this, that's just normal ability uses. Of course, there's no actual game where, uh, let alone a Primal Spirit, a Primal Guy will just let it live. Right? Come on, guys. Good job. 
So while Phoenix is on low health, uh, he does more damage, which I think is a good thing for him, because that gives him a reason to actually not have all of his health back. Because uh, that was a problem Phoenix had, in my opinion, where you always lose health. There's no reason to lose health, but now there is with the, the, the Dying Light passive. Also, I had a game where I thought about just getting Armlet specifically keep me at low health, and that actually might be the play. <laughs> so yeah, the build idea is to go for some amount, some like high amount of health, having Armlet in order to keep me at that low health so that I can have a constant 225 damage going. <laughs> Gosh. Of course, main problem is actually getting that, but it also means I can't get Heart. So if I get that, then I start regenerating all my health, and all of a sudden, uh, the damage starts getting lower, and lower, and lower. I mean, even with this amount of health, uh, if I'm at half, I do, like, my supernova's worth of damage every second. Which is kind of nice. Oh, something else to note. Uh, if you activate supernova while you're on low health, uh, dying light doesn't function at that time. Okay, notice that they are taking 135, 152 damage. Activate Supernova. They're no longer taking the that chunk of damage. You can even see on the target down there that uh, they're not getting that big burst of damage. Even though, when in Supernova, you have that low health, the Dying Light passive doesn't actually benefit. Uh, I would feel, personally, if that actually did if the dying light passive did work while it was in supernova while you're still on low health that would make phoenix way more risky to use because you have to get on low health in order to use that but if you're not careful you end up dying because you're on low health that's just me though and uh no one listens to the phoenix spammer definitely swapping over to hotspot it allows sunray to deal increasingly more damage and healing based on the distance from phoenix and the ray uh, this also is affected by Spell Amp. Or not Spell Amp, Cast Amp, sorry. Uh, so normally... I'll just... that. So already we can see our Primal on the right took about half his health as damage, that's normal. But on the far side, it seems like he took about 60 or 70% of his health as damage. And gonna put on Aether Lens. Yeah, the one on the far end did take a bit more damage. Let's see, one more test, just so I actually get numbers. So the primal on the far end... Is... Um, uh, he took 2,700 damage. Okay, that's nice. Put on Aether Lens and try that again. Yeah, it does an additional 200 damage. So, if we take this to the extreme, get a few buffs to cast range. So, <laughs> that's a big beam. And now we test it out again. Primal on the far end. Um, almost dies! <laughs> and just to test this out, here's a healing comparison. As you can see, a lot more health recovered than the first the primal. Come on, boys, beat him up. We got a we got a game to show off. All right. So now we'll use extra cast range. Back up a bit. Sit back up a bit. Okay, the healing definitely is a huge increase, but it doesn't seem like the cast range affects the healing as much as the damage does. Although, frankly, the healing isn't there. Hmm. Okay, now I'm curious. You all move out of the way. I got some dummies to test on. Actually, one of you primals get up here. I can't summon an ally dummy. Come on. There we go. Okay, regions effectively cancelled out. That's going to be my test subject. Uh, can one of the other primals get up here and damage him? Thank you. 
Alright, that's enough. And this is how I test things. Okay, about 178-ish? 178-ish. There's a sunray. This shouldn't have hotspot affected at all right now. Alright, so now he... So he got healed for about 800, bit over 800. Moving further away. Our primal is at 100 health. Blast him. Okay, so Hotspot does work. He got healed an extra 400 health? No, 200 health. And one more test with max range, sunray, max, ca max cast range. He was at about 60 or 70 health. Okay, that is a significant amount. <laughs> got healed for practically 1,700. Now, of course, these numbers aren't actually correct because uh, it, it's all based on maximum health. I probably should do, like, percentage conversions. Like, oh, what's their max health at this time? Okay, maybe their max health is over here. I don't feel like doing those calculations. Just to give you guys a rough idea of what kind of healing we're dealing with. But yeah, one other thing to check is how good this is at level 1. Because that's something I was curious about. So, level 1 Sunray. Of course, it doesn't really do that much damage. It never does. However, hotspot range sunray. Does about three times as much zero damage. Okay, I need, I need a better test subject. Look, you get reset back down to level one. I'll actually test this out better. Okay, level one sunray point blank. How much damage does that do? Uh, does a bit over a hundred damage to one dude, which uh, is not worth it at all for an ability like Sunray. However, max distance Sunray hotspot amped. Yeah, I think about 200 damage. That actually might be viable just to have like a 200 damage AOE ability. Of course, it is on a long cooldown of uh, 30 seconds, and it would just be better to use Fire Spirits, but the viability is there, and also the healing is better, too. So, obviously, get that leveled up. It'll actually do some damage. Of course, this is level 1, so not point uh Does that actually kill him? It doesn't kill <laughs> Guys, level 4 Sunray is so bad, it can't even kill a level 1 hero on its own. <laughs> so my take on the new facets, Dying Light is a really good core Phoenix build, allowing you to do an extra chunk of damage per second around you. It's practically the same as having a Radiance uh, that scales off your missing health. Hotspot is better for the late game, just because so you can use Sunray a whole lot more often. Uh, the game really wants Phoenix to be using Sunray as much as possible, which is why Supernova allows it to get buffed. Or buffed as in you... I don't have the shard. <clears throat> uh, buffed as in you can have Sunray active while you're in Supernova, which is already a huge benefit. Because, uh, oddly enough, Supernova does protect you, because uh, you can't be stunned out of Sunray anymore. So having uh, having something that deals more damage based on the distance, you can see how serious that damage is. Now how effective this is going to be in an actual game, I'm not sure, but here's the build. You get Radiance, and you get a bunch of extra health, and try to get resistances to stay at that low health. All of a sudden you do uh, about to over 200 passive DPS? Ow! And I'm just going to use it on a Primal. Oh, Primal. Hecking die. Now, it might be interesting to go in and do a bunch of damage to everybody. Oh, wow, look at the burn damage. It actually is quite a bit. Well, what if they blasted you to bits because you're at, like, a thousand health? Uh, that's where I think the uh, having Eternal Shroud or some kind of resistances in general would be a good addition to using Dying Light. But it does fall off late, just because it it is a good chunk of damage later. 
But uh, I don't know, even having 200 DPS isn't good if you can't survive it. That's kind of why having Eternal Shroud Shiva's items that just help you survive in general is a good idea. Just to actually be able to survive at that low health. Of course, what would be a really good addition, like I said earlier, if Supernova allowed the Dying Light damage to go through as well, is that would be a huge DPS increase. Of course, it doesn't. I mean, could you imagine that a passive 200 damage from Radiance and Dying Light on top of all of this? That would just be crazy. Although, realistically, uh, having just Radiance, Dying Light, and even at like half health in general, you do about 200 DPS, which is fairly fine, all things considered. I mean, Pudge kind of does a little bit more than that. But, uh, like I said, if Supernova actually benefited from Dying Light, so that it would work as well, that would make it a little bit better, synergize better. But I don't know if that'll make things easier. I just think it would be more logical that while Phoenix is still on low health, Supernova does the Dying Light damage. That's just me, though. So, closing this out, Dying Light is an interesting passive to benefit from Phoenix killing himself most of the time. Uh, I don't think it's enough, but I feel like if it's any more, then it actually would be a problem. At the moment, it is really good at clearing creep waves, or taking jungle camps, which is why I say it's a really good core option. I mean, even without any items, I'm just going to keep armlets so this actually does work. Go away, creeps. Wow, I didn't even attack there. I threw out like a spirit, maybe, but that's like it. Cleared out that wave so fast. Look, having a passive Radiance is really nice. That, That's pretty much what it is. Phoenix just is a passive Radiance if you have Dying Light. Of course, with less range, but you know what I mean. All personally, I think Hotspot's just a better uh, support option, just so Sunray is able to do much more damage than it should be able to. Uh, Aether Lens is an item that you could build, potentially, just to benefit more from the Sunray damage distance. But I'm not sure how reliable it'll be to be at that max distance and actually get any benefit from it. But basically, Hotspot buffed up Sunray is enough to make a difference later on in the game, just so you can do... Look at that, significantly more damage than you would before. So yeah, most games go for Hotspot and try to support your team. Try to level up Sunray as soon as you can to benefit from that more. But Dying Light is a good idea if you want to go for a more core-centric build, and you should treat it as a Radiance and try to keep your health low purposefully to benefit from it better. Uh, one last thing before I end the video, Icarus Dive is still unaffected by cast range. What that actually means use it. I'm gonna go to that bush. I know, I went to the bush. So cool. I'm gonna get Aether Lens. Should increase the cast range, right? No. I'm still gonna go to that bush. Oh. No. What bugs me is that every other one of Phoenix's abilities benefits from cast range to some extent. All that to say, while picking Aether Lens might be nice to make Sunray more effective, I would love to pick it up if Icarus Dive was also affected by it. Because frankly, uh, having just that little extra range for for spirits, so instead of going to there, it can go a little bit further. That doesn't make much of a difference, and whoever's over there is probably going to run away. I mean, Sunray, having the extra range is good, but I would love if Icarus Dive was affected by it. But of course, uh, that's just not the case right now. So, those were my thoughts on Phoenix's changes in 736. As I said earlier, I've got a long video in the works that just goes over everyone's passive and having footage to go along with it, just so it makes a little bit more sense. That video should come out probably in a week at this rate. I've got other projects that I want to do, but expect it around a week from now. Though, first impression thoughts on the entire update itself. Uh, oh my gosh, everyone got changed three times over. It's crazy. Uh, cats and dogs are raining from the sky or something like that. I will definitely try to make some more videos, uh, mostly gameplay stuff going over, just toying around with new things. Although I'm not entirely sure on making them, uh, it's kind of iffy right now. As much as I like playing Dota, there's still like parts that I don't like and 
going past those things I don't like is what's required. So, probably something I should do is get good. At some point. Well, anyways, I have been Dean Spellabeam back on your screen, giving you my thoughts on the changes on Phoenix for the latest Dota update. Hope you all enjoyed it at least some amount, and you all have a good night.